This mini lecture is about the mathematics and dynamics of population growth. You have a beautiful pond. You go out there every day to fish or sit on the deck and enjoy the view. One day you notice there's a weed growing along the edge and it's very small so you're not worried but you watch it and you notice that the next day the weed has doubled in, in the area that it covers and the day after that it's doubled again but it's still just a small little corner of your pond and so you're not that worried but you pay attention to it, you notice it doubles every day, and you decide that you're going to do something about it when it becomes significant. Now I'm going to tell you right now that with one thing and another, you're not going to notice, and all of a sudden on day 30, you're going to wake up and find that the weed has completely covered your pond. My question is, how much of it was covered on day 29? Did you say half? Remember, it's doubling every day. Now here's the thing. Half is not alarming. Half doesn't raise anybody's concerns and questions. Half is nothing to worry about. But half is the 29th day. Half is just one doubling away from disaster. And that is why the mathematics of population growth are so important. Look at your weed coverage on a linear graph you can see that it didn't look like anything until the 27th or 8th day and the 29th day it was still only half it was the 30th day that you woke up to find disaster completely unprepared for it so this is the most important equation that you'll ever learn and the most misunderstood it's the equation for exponential growth and this is not the first time you've seen it it's not even the first time you've seen it in this class we use the same equation for radioactive decay, remember? And you've seen it in other classes as well. The final number of whatever it is you're counting is equal to the initial number times e to the rt, where r is the rate of growth and t is time. Now our weed was growing at a very steady rate the whole time, which is much more clear if you plot it on a log plot, and that's how that equation plots. So here's a very little math to determine the amount of time it takes for something to double. Why doubling? Well, it turns out that things that grow at a steady rate, population, money, if you have it in interest, uh, can be talked about in terms of how quickly they double. And it's a very useful thing for humans to think about because we understand doubling. Doubling makes sense. So to calculate doubling time, we just plug in a 2 for the current population, a 1 for the initial, that will double it. And now we need to take the natural log of 2, which is 0.69. So 0.6931 equals the rate times the time. And remember, in this case, the rate is written as a decimal. So 5% is 0.05. So let's just multiply both sides times 100 so we don't have to deal with those decimals. And we come up with an equation that says 70, rounded up, is equal to the rate of change times time. So doubling time. We, we plug this in for doubling, right? So that's doubling time. So the time to doubling is very simply 70 divided by the rate of change. That's a really simple equation, and I suggest you remember it. It can be very handy. So here you go. Here's one handy way to use it. Let's say that you're investing your savings in a mutual fund yielding 3.5% a year. How quickly will you double your money? You can do this. 70 divided by 3.5, see I gave you a very easy number there, is 20 years. You're going to double your money in 20 years. So that sounds like a pretty great investment if you happen to be 18. Maybe you should start investing in a mutual fund. It'll be double by the time you're 38, and it will be double again four times by the time you're 58. How great is that? Here's another one. In 2007, the population of Austin, Texas was about 750,000 and growing at a rate of 2.9%. How long will it take Austin to double in size? You might need a calculator. Or you could estimate it. 24 years. This, by the way, is a picture of an attempt to have the largest number of dancers complete the thriller dance. Michael Jackson, anyone? So we, we talk about population doubling because it's a very useful way of thinking about population growth or anything growing exponentially. 
at the beginning, things start out very slowly, and we have a curve that we call the J-shaped curve. So a very slow start, and then the doubling begins to take off, and it goes up a pretty rapid rate. But eventually, the thing that is growing, the thing that is doubling, will come to some carrying capacity in, in an environmental issue. It won't with money, of course. There's no carrying capacity there. But it will if, there's a, if it's ecological, if you're talking about a population or several other kinds of things. And so when it starts to run out of resources, when it starts to reach the maximum growth, it will turn over and form what we now call an S-shaped curve. Fast at the beginning, slow at the end, uh, or sorry, slow at the beginning, slow at the end, and fast in the middle. Now, you may be thinking to yourself, I'm not going to be a geologist, I'm not going to study population, I'm not going to be an ecologist, why do I need to know this? Well, you need to know this because a lot of other things can be graphed in this way and can be studied in this way in, for useful purposes. For example, if you are a manufacturer of smartphones, you might make this kind of a forecast for how long it is reasonable to expect that you can continue to innovate and continue to grow your market of smartphones. Eventually, you're going to run up against the carrying capacity limit of the number of people who are over the age of 13 and might likely buy one. So there may be a point on this curve where you say, it's not worth the money for our company to invest in innovation anymore. In this market, it's nearly saturated. So this is something that's used all over the place, not just in ecology or population studies. This is a graph that shows the world population in a real form, and it's kind of interesting because it superimposes three different things on one graph. So you can see the years in gray from about 1790 to 2050, projected, of course, at the end part. And then there are three things plotted here. In blue, we see the number of billions of people on Earth. So World population, human population, reached 1 billion for the first time in a little bit after 1800. And it took more than 120 years before the second billion people were here on Earth. But the third billion only took 37 years. The fourth billion took 15, and then 13, and then 12. The fifth and sixth billion came along very, very quickly. And then it started to stretch out again. The seventh billion took 14 years. It's projected that the eighth billion will take about 15 years, and the ninth billion will take about 20 years. So what's going on? Are we reaching a carrying capacity? Well, we are certainly slowing population growth. And part of that is answered in green by the number of children per woman. And this is only tracked back to 1950. We don't have data that are strong enough to track it all the way back to the 1800s. But starting in 1950 and moving forward, Average worldwide women had about five children per, per woman, and now it's down to less than two as a worldwide average. And what has that done to the increase in millions every year? Well, that's in orange, and you can see that the annual increase in world population was really slow for a long time. And then in the 1950s, all of a sudden it leapt forward. Growth rate was very fast after World War II. Of course, in the 20s, well, in the 1910s and in the 1940s, we had a war killing off a lot of people, and that certainly slowed the annual increase in population. But with peace and prosperity, with better health care, with better infant survival rates, population growth increased quite rapidly in the 50s, 60s, 70s, into the 80s, and then it started to slow down again. And by 2015, the annual increase will be much lower than it is today. Its population is still growing, but it's growing at a smaller rate. And this is what that looks like on a growth rate and population graph. These data are from the United Nations. Population in, is in blue and on the left axis, and annual growth rate is in red and on the right axis. And we are the black line approximately. Um, the world population is about seven, close to 7.4 billion now, and the annual growth rate is about 1.1% as a worldwide average. In the U.S., the annual growth rate is 0.7%. There's a couple of interesting things on this curve. You can see that the growth rate peaked in about 1964 at about 2.3 or so percent. 
schools as a worldwide average, and since then it has been steadily declining. And that decline is attributed to uh, birth control, to women delaying childbirth, entering the workforce, uh, to uh, lower infant mortality rates in third world countries leading to smaller families. And that decline is projected to continue until it drops down to about a half a percent a year by 2050. There's also a really interesting dip here in 1959 and 60, and I don't expect you to know about that, so I'll tell you what that's about. China at the time was a communist country, and they dictated policies for the for their population. They started something in the late 50s called the Great Leap Forward, which turned out to be a Great Leap Backwards. It destroyed the agricultural crops, which dropped to a very low rate, fertility rates drops, and millions of people starved. And it was a big enough impact in world population to cause this spike downwards in annual growth rate. Other things that have caused downward spikes in growth rates or in human populations are plague, the plague in the 1400s, you can see that on the human population curve, um, and wars will certainly slow down if not stop human population growth. As you can see, the sort of flattening of the curve back there in the 40s was World War II. So the United Nations Population uh, Bureau every year reports on world population and they make projections forward into the future. And this is the latest projection from the United Nations looking at three possible scenarios for future population growth, assuming either fertility rate is very high or low or somewhere in the middle. So assuming a high fertility rate population on Earth could reach 15.8 billion by 2100 and a low fertility rate, it would peak out a little over 8 billion and drop down. Um, and a medium fertility rate, it would peak out around 10 billion or so in 2100. These projections change every year as growth rates change and fertility rates change, and they're interesting to look at over the course of time. People think the comp carrying capacity of Earth is somewhere between 10 and 14 billion. That's where you see most estimates. And some places on Earth, however, locally have already exceeded their carrying capacity. And you can see that in many third world countries where water is in terrible supply, where it's very difficult to grow crops. Uh, there are locally areas that have already exceeded ca carrying capacity. One of the things you're going to get to look at as part of your next assignment is the United Nations World Population Report and see what some of these places around the Earth look like. This is a fun website you might want to go to and just look at where you are in the history of human population. I entered a birth date of April 1st, 1997. Maybe one of you was born that date. If you were, you were the 81 billion, 244 444,494,234th person to be born ever in the world. And something like at the time you were born, there were 5.8 billion people on Earth. Today, there have been about 84 billion people born since history began, and the total world population is close to 7.4 billion. And the current world population clock is another interesting place to go. If this were live, what you would see is those numbers changing constantly. 7.4 billion is the population today, February 25th, 2016. And uh, there have been already 168,000 births today, 21, 000, 21 million births worldwide this year.